We're live. We're live. Oh, okay, cool. All right, hi guys. Um, today we're doing hip flexors. Uh, if you are in a place that's like hardwood floor um, and you have a carpet nearby, I would suggest the softer the surface today, the better. If you want to double up on your mats, we're going to be on our knees a lot today. So um, if you have sensitive knees and you don't have a carpet, you can fold your mat under um, to help give your knees an extra cushion. You can um, get a separate towel to put under your knees for when we are on all fours, um, just to make sure that your knees don't get irritated. Uh, we're stretching the hip flexors, which is something we use a lot in Jiu Jitsu. Anytime that you're in guard, uh, you're typically contracting those muscles. Anytime that you're bringing the knee in towards the chest, you're crunching that muscle and the hip flexors are right here. And these are really important for a lot of reasons. We tend to ignore them when we stretch because it's not as easy to stretch as some of the larger muscle groups. They attach from your quad, uh, your thigh, through your pelvis onto your low back. So when you have tightness here, you typically also have low back pain. Um, I also have a pillow here that we'll be using today. You can use anything, a small pillow or towel will work. If you have yoga blocks at home, you could use those instead. Um, yeah, that's just about it. So uh, we'll get started. You gave me the nice heavy pillow. I gave Yanni the heavy duty pillow. <laughs> this is an awesome pillow. Yeah, it was like an expensive it. pillow actually. <laughs> I have one just like on my uh, bed when I bought my new mattress. It's like a cooling bed. pillow. Yeah. <laughs> With gel inside. I may just steal it today. Like, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start um, in our crisscross position, hands on the knees, and we're making circles, just getting the synovial fluid flowing in our hips. Exhaling on the way forward, inhaling on the way up. Two more times here. And reverse. So in order to stretch your hip flexors, it requires lunging motions and back bending motions. So we're gonna be doing a lot of those two things today. Anytime where your hip is forward of your knee. One more. Good, and then bring the arms up over it. Interlace your thumbs, press it up. Bend to the side. And switch. Good, and release behind your back. Puff up your chest. Oh, I forgot to see if I was even in frame. I hope I am. You're in frame, yep, you're good. <laughs> and then leaning forward. Tent your fingers. Walk it to the side. And switch. Back to the middle. Good, and then from here we'll come up to all fours. Okay, so hands right under your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Okay, so we're gonna um, rotate the hips in a circular motion. Bring your hips to the side, back, side, and center. Keep going. And reverse. One more. Good. Back to the middle. Raise your right leg back behind you. And then if you need to, you can center your other hand. See if you can balance and reach for the The ankle, good, hold. One more deep breath. And let it go, switch. So make sure you're spreading your fingers wide. You can tuck your back toes to help you balance. Lift the leg first. Slowly, you can come onto your fingertips first and then slowly reach back.
One more deep breath. Slowly coming down. Very good. Tuck your toes. Move your hands about one handprint forward and lift up into downward facing dog. Pedal out your heels. And we'll take a down dog scorpion. Bring your right leg all the way up to the ceiling. Then bend your right knee and open the hips so that your, your hip bones are stacked. Then your knee is pointing up towards the ceiling, so you'll feel a slight hip flexor stretch here. Good, close the knee, and we'll switch opposite legs straight up first. Bend the knee, turn the knee towards the ceiling. Good, close the knee, come back to downward facing dog, floating into plank. And then we'll lower all the way onto the floor. Lift the chest. Downward facing dog. Step or jump your feet forward. And hold a forward fold. One more deep breath here. Good, slowly rolling up. Okay, so we're gonna warm up with some uh, sun salutations and we're going to add a lunge in there to target our hip flexor. So I'll show you the sequence first and then we'll do it together about five times. All right, so our typical sun salutation, we start here, exhale the hands down, we look forward, we step or jump back, we lower down, lifting up, downward facing dog. Um, this is where we're going to add in our lunge. So we'll come here, Bring the foot forward, arms come up, exhale down, opposite leg, exhale down, and then back to the top. Okay, so that's one, and we're gonna do five together. I will obviously walk you through each one so that we're all in pace here, all right? So starting at the top of your mat, feet together. Inhale the arms up, looking up at your thumbs. Exhale, folding forward. Bending your knees, hands on the floor, step or jump back to plank. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg comes straight up, and then lunge the foot forward, coming into a high lunge. Sink your hips low here so you can start to feel the front of your hip, and then exhale, hands down, step back to plank, go through your flow. Second side, left leg comes up high, and then lunge it through. Push through your back heel as you sink the hips low. Good, hands to the floor. Go through your flow. Step or jump forward. Forward fold. Inhale the arms up. And that's one. Go ahead and fold right back down for two. Step or jump back to plank. Go through your flow. Right leg comes up, lunge the foot forward, lifting the arms, sinking your hips. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank, go through your flow. Second side, lift it up. Left foot comes forward, sinking the hip, pushing the front knee forward. Exhale down, go through your flow. Step or jump forward, forward fold. Inhale the arms up, and that's two. Good, keep going. Jumping or stepping back, going through your flow. Right leg comes up. 
lunge the foot forward getting a good foundation in your legs as you push the knee and the hip down step uh, the hands back down go through your flop left leg is coming up good lunge it forward Trying to keep that back knee as straight as you can here. Exhaling down, stepping back, go through your flow. Step or jump forward right into your forward fold. Relaxing your head. Inhale the arms up. That's three, exhale down. Step or jump back, go through your flow. Right leg comes up. Launch the foot forward. Inhale up, pushing deep in the hip. Exhale, hands come down, step back to plank. Go through your flow. Left leg comes up. Go ahead and lunge the foot forward. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands come down. Go through your flow. Step or jump forward right into your forward fold. Inhale the arms up. Good. That's four, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so one more, guys. Here we go. Step or jump back. Go through your flow. Getting nice and warm. Right leg is coming up. Push the foot forward. Arms come up. This time we're going to hold for five deep breaths. So get nice and low. Push through your back heel. Knee in the back is nice and straight. Good. Hands to the floor. Step back to plank. When you're ready, go ahead and take the left leg up and lunge it through. Sinking the hips lower with each breath. One more deep breath here. Exhale, hands come down. Step back to plank. Go through your flow. And then we'll step or jump into our fold fold, holding for five deep breaths. Relaxing the neck completely. Place your hands on your shins. Look forward with a straight back. Two more deep breaths here. And then relax the arms back down. Bending your knees, place your hands on the floor. Step the right foot, foot back. Come onto your fingertips and lift your chest away off the knee. Okay, so we're just sinking the hips. We're on the back toes. Chest is lifted off the knee. And then start to rock forward and back. Push into your back heel as you rock back. Plant your right hand down onto the floor. Inhale, twisting the left arm up. Exhale the hand down. Okay. Um, place your other hand on the inside of the foot now. So same thing, but we're twisting the other way. Good. Both hands come down, framing your foot. And step back to plank. Go through your flow. 
meeting in our standing forward fold. And relax the head down. Good, bending your knees, set the opposite foot back, left foot, coming onto your fingertips. Lift your chest off the knee and sink your hips low. Good, get a little rock. And then go ahead and plant the inside hand. Sweep the other arm up, looking at your thumb. And then as you come down, replace that hand and sweep the other hand up. Good, both hands come down, framing the foot. Step back to downward facing dog. Pedal out your heels. And we'll come down to all fours again. Okay, we're gonna take the left toes and turn them out to the side. Then go ahead and stack your hips on top of each other, almost like you're doing a side plank. And you can stay here or see if you can lift up the leg. If you can lift up the leg, begin to flex the foot and push the heel back. All right, so this will give you a mild stretch in the hip flexor. My hand is on my hip. If it's possible, you can bend the knee and reach for the ankle and further pull the knee past the hip. You can also bring the heel towards the glutes. Good, go ahead and bring yourself back down to all fours and we'll switch. So the opposite toes turn out to the side. Stack the hips, hand on the hip. I have my hand right underneath my shoulder. And then go ahead and lift the leg. And isn't that, it's hotter in here than usual, but I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> it's like 80 degrees out today, so I'm not surprised. I'm like dripping on the mat a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> no, I'm sweating. All right, so we're pulling the knee. Like how we had snow on Saturday. I know. <laughs> today is like a lot. It's actually oh, summertime today. <laughs> Good, gently release the ankle. And we'll take a child's pose here. I hope you guys are doing this in air conditioning at home. <laughs> because it's hot out. And then coming back to all fours, we'll bring the right foot forward between the hands. Scoot your back knee away a little bit so that your um, knee is flush against the floor. Uh, we don't want it perpendicular like this, so go ahead and scooch it away. Okay. Now, again, we're lifting the chest away from the knee. Then one, um, one thing you want to make sure before you take your hands off the mat is that your ankle is right underneath your knee. If you're too far this way, it's a little intense on the knee, so make sure that you're nice and lined up. Um, and we're actually gonna just rock back and forth here, getting some fluid motion going in the knee before we commit to the full lunge. Okay, so we're just dynamically stretching. You can bring the toes up on your way back, if you like, getting a full little runner stretch here. One more, and then when you're ready, sink the hips as low as you can, and bring your hands one hand at a time to the knee. And I have a baby back bend here. Ooh, hip flexor is burning. <laughs> yeah, right in here. So we're going to hold this for two more breaths. 
Try to keep your chest lifted. Good. Both hands come to the inside for lizard. Um, this time we're going to tuck your toes and lift the knee for lizard. And then come down maybe to one forearm or both. You can use your pillow or your blocks to raise your forearms if you're having trouble getting both to the floor. Okay, so we want that back knee active and we're rocking here back and forth. Back practice now. <laughs> <laughs> One more deep breath. And then you can return the knee to the mat, untuck your toes, and just relax into your lizard. One more deep breath here. Okay, coming back up to your palms, preparing for our pigeon. Um, we're gonna take an upright pigeon because we're targeting our hip flexor. If you want to, you can use a pillow to deepen your pigeon stretch. So instead of putting your shin on the mat, you can increase the intensity by using the pillow. If you're a yoga person, you might have a bolster that will also do the same, same thing. A yoga person? Yeah, if you have yoga equipment <laughs> <laughs> at your house, which oh. I don't think a lot of jiu-jitsu people have. But once we're here, we want the hip bones to be aligned. So if you're facing me, both of your hip bones should be facing me. Okay, so I'll show you from this angle uh, we want to be here rather than here okay so both hip bones are square and then same thing we're gonna tuck the back toes and lift the back knee off the floor I'm on my fingertips and we're just pushing that hip towards the floor so this one you feel like in your glute a lot Right. Yeah, it's activating the glute and stretching the front of the hip. Mm. One more deep breath. And then relax the knee. We're going to bend the knee and reach back for the ankle. Heel hooking your own leg? Yeah, right? you're going to heel hook your own leg. <laughs> and but don't tap. Breath. I'd rather die. <laughs> One more deep breath. You should feel this in the front of your thigh as well, bringing the heel towards the butt and then letting it go nice and slow. Hands in front of you, spread your fingers, tuck your back toe down, we're facing dog. And you can slide your pillow out of the way for now. We'll need it in a bit. Bringing the opposite foot forward for lunge. So same exact sequence on the other leg. So getting that dynamic um, runner stretch to lunge. And then find a nice deep low lunge here and we'll come up one hand at a time. Keeping the chest lifted, sinking your hips forward. One more deep breath. Good, hands come down on the inside. And uh, we're lifting the back toes. 
rocking forward and back. You can come down onto your forearms. You can use the pillow if you need it to raise the floor. One more deep breath here. And then go ahead and lower your knee into full lizard. Regular A lizard? Regular A lizard. One more deep breath and then we'll make our way back up onto your palms and you can move forward into your pigeon with or without your pillow. Again checking that your hip bones are aligned and I'm on my fingers here tucking my back toes and lifting the knee while sinking my hips forward. Force those omoplatas in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then relax your knee, untuck the toes. Oh wait, I forgot the uh, I forgot the knee thing. You have to bend our knee first. Oh right. I was yeah. going into autopilot with my regular pigeon. <laughs> Okay, we got a heel hook your own foot. Wrong leg, rip it, but don't tap. <laughs> don't you dare tap. <laughs> we'll think so less of you. <laughs> tap the heel hooks. It's funny, sometimes when I do manual stretching for yoga, uh, jiu jitsu people, they'll, they'll tap. <laughs> they'll tap when I'm like stretching their legs. It's like, no, I'm just like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> This is good for you. So you're saying jiu-jitsu people are weak-minded. <laughs> they tap too easy. They tap too easy. Good. Release. Um, bring your hands forward. Downward facing dog. Hello it out. And then come down onto both knees. Keep your knees together. Tuck your toes and we'll sit back to stretch our jiu-jitsu feet. Okay, so your toes are curled under. Your chest is right above your hips. One more deep breath. Good, hands come forward. Untuck your toes and sit back on your feet. So now we're stretching the front of your feet. Okay, so we're gonna take Heron Pose, which is a deep hip flexor stretch. I'm gonna show you first I'll show you the modifications and then you can decide which one is right for you. We'll be using your pillow or, or if you're using blocks instead, we'll use the blocks. Um, and we're gonna use the pillow to just sit on top. And that's gonna create a little bit of distance in the- Like uh, you're mounted. Yeah, like you're mounting the pillow, yep. <laughs> um, Four points. So, the more inflexible you are, the better it is to have like a, a lot of distance. So um, if you have like a firm pillow at home or you're using blocks, that would be ideal if you are very inflexible or if you have any knee or meniscus issues and you need to open up the angle of knee flexion, okay? So uh, step one here is to decide how far apart your heel is gonna be. The wider your heel is from your hip, the less rigorous this will be. So if your knees are basically touching and your heels are nice and close, it's going to be the most intense, okay? Um, then you're gonna lean one and the other palm back and just see first if that's okay. If that's okay, you might be able to get one forearm down and then the next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Get one, oh, maybe. But now my knees are coming off the ground. Right. You definitely want to make sure that your knees are touching the floor. The farther away your knees are from the floor, the less safe your knees will be. So 
Um, if you're here and you're finding that you can get here but your knees start to lift, consider putting another pillow underneath your elbows to elevate mm. Give me your the pillow. distance. No, you can take my no, pillow. No, no, I don't okay. need it. I can do it without the pillow. I'm that's just okay. Going. Okay. Yanni needs the bean bag from the yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look how high this one is. <laughs> okay, so if you're very flexible or if you were able to find um, a pillow for underneath your elbows, the next step would be to bring your shoulders onto the floor. Okay, and that's going to fully open up this area here. There should be no knee pain, no back pain here. If you're feeling any of that, stop. Um, get yourself an extra pillow or prop to elevate you from the floor. And then, you know, you can try this again. <laughs> I put my hands out wide, is that okay? Or? Yeah, as long as your shoulders are comfortable. Although I feel like I might slip and just fall back <laughs> on my hands. <laughs> At least the... Uh... Just snap my hips into the pieces. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good, and then bring one elbow at a time back and come back onto one palm at a time. Lean your weight forward and we'll take a child's pose because this is somewhat of a back bend. So you can go ahead and lean forward. One more deep breath here. Good, coming up. Okay, so we're gonna um, take another variation of that. It's maybe a little more intense for some people because we're just gonna isolate one leg at a time now. So I have my other foot planted on the floor. And again, you're gonna decide how much space you want in between your heel and your hip. And maybe you have a cushion behind your back as well to fall down on with your elbows. Okay, make sure that your knee is touching the floor. How's this one, Yanni? This one's a bit easier. Okay, good. So, if you're like Yanni and you're not feeling challenged by this, um, we're going to take a mini bridge here. So, keeping the front of your foot and your knee glued to the floor and this foot stamped onto the floor. Push into your elbows or your palms and lift your hips. So you should be feeling this in the front of your thigh and the front of your hip. You might feel the glutes activating. And then relax the hips back down nice and slow. If you are able to um, come onto the floor all the way here, the next step would be to lift your other foot off the floor and hug the knee towards the armpit. And then you're gonna feel a more intense stretch in that hip flexor area. Yeah, my knee just comes up the yeah. too close. Yanni's our um, role model for the the modification version. Know your limits, people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yanni, if it makes you feel better, Jen told me today that you're a yoga superstar. Oh, am I? Yes. yes. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Jen's a big fan. She is. She's a big supporter. She she liked the, the podcast a lot, too. Yeah, it. she should. It was awesome. It was so funny. Good. Go ahead and come back up. And we'll just extend both legs and shake them out and take a forward fold. Just to give our knees a break. Good, coming up and we'll switch. So now my opposite foot is bent and I'm taking my, my right foot back. Okay, so we're leaning backwards onto the floor or our pillows. And you can stay here or go ahead and lift your hips. Wow, 
Wow, it's really hot in here. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Good. Is the heat on or something? I don't think so. Oh, wait, I never switched it off. Not that the heat would turn on <laughs> at this point. It's just always hot in here. <laughs> Good, and then again, you can stay here, or if you're flexible, very slowly, you can lower your shoulders onto a pillow or the floor behind you, making sure that your knee is glued to the floor at all times. See if you can lift the knee and hug it into your chest. This is a like super duper quad stretch. One more deep breath. Good, relax the foot to the floor. One hand at a time, one elbow at a time. Coming up. And then we'll shift our weight and take another forward fold. Good, slowly coming up. You can remove the pillow and set it to the side. And then we'll bend the knees preparing to do some bridging on the floor. So hips come in towards the heels and we roll onto the back. And we're taking our bridge, interlacing the hands behind the back and scooching your shoulder blades together. So they come up nice and high. My feet are hip width apart. One more deep breath here. And then slowly lower the hips back down. And windshield wipe the knees back and forth. Good, like a figure four with your legs. And we're gonna bridge with our legs in this position. So go ahead and extend. Flexing your feet. And then lower the hips and we'll switch opposite on top. Widen that knee out to the side before you lift your hips. Good, lower the hips, bring your knees into a butterfly position and just let gravity open up the knees here. One more deep breath. Good, close the knees, hug them into the chest. Rock from side to side, massaging your low back. We're gonna take another bridge. Go ahead and bring the heels nice and close to the hips. I'm gonna give you the option to take full wheel here if you prefer that over the bridge. I'll just show you full wheel really quick. All right, so we're here in the full wheel. If it's there, if you want to take it, we're gonna hold for five deep breaths. Either repeat your bridge or take your full wheel for five. Deep breaths. Four, push your hips up towards the ceiling. Three. Two. Tuck your chin into your chest and slowly roll your hips back down right into a, a knee stretch, hugging those knees in. You can rock from side to side. Good. 
Good, extend both legs. And bring your arms overhead and just stretch the whole front of your body by pointing your toes and interlacing your thumbs and just stretching the whole front of the body. One more deep breath here. We're gonna come up to touch your toes. As we come up, see if you can keep your heels glued to the floor all the way up. It's gonna take a little core strength. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, look forward, look at your toes, and then as slowly as you can, see if you can roll up using your core strength. Keeping your glutes and your heels glued to the floor. We got a comment? Well, old Dwayne was just, uh, he's, he said hi before, but then he says, three eight minute rolls with Big Brian is easier than the tap Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with a heel hook. Oh man, yeah, I get out of so much stuff, it's not even funny. <laughs> Good, um, so we're gonna take um, the King Dancer because it's a great hip flexor stretch. If you want to take the balance work out of it, you can use a wall and actually get an even deeper hip flexor stretch. So I'll show you both versions, we're standing for this. Um, so our regular King Dancer, we are here with the knees glued together and typically i'll show you from the side um, we want the the heel towards the butt and the knees glued together which might be enough for you if you want to work on your balance here when we come into the full dancer uh, we eventually kick the foot up and away and you'll feel that in here uh, if you have trouble balancing though you can take it to the wall <coughs> with your fingertips forward and you can get an, a much deeper hip stretch here. So if you have a wall available to you and you want that, uh, we're gonna hold it for five deep breaths and then switch. I'm actually going to use the wall myself today, um, but you have that option, okay? So make yourself situated at your arm's length away from the wall, if you're using it, and then go ahead and kick the foot up as high as you can. And you'll feel this in your shoulder as well. Deep breaths, one more. Very good, coming up nice and slow. And we'll switch, shift your weight into the opposite foot. I'm reaching for the inside of my ankle and then I'm kicking my foot up towards the ceiling nice and high. The lower I can get my chest, the better. Three, two, and one. Coming up nice and slow. Very good. We'll take a forward fold here. Um, just because that is also a back bend, so we're coming forward to counter that back bend. One more deep breath here. Relax your neck completely. Good, step your right foot back to a low lunge. Drop your knee to the floor. Because we're taking that same crescent lunge. This time, you can either stay here or bring the arms up overhead. It's gonna increase your back bend. One more deep breath. Good, hands come to the floor, fingertips. Tuck your back toes and lift up into a pyramid pose. Just dropping over the front knee.
Good, back foot meets the front foot, forward fold. One more deep breath. Good, bending your knees, hands to the floor. Left foot steps back, dropping the knee, untucking the toes. One hand at a time coming up, pushing the hips. How you doing, Yanni? Great. <laughs> <laughs> and then the hands come up. By the way, I'm too old for this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now two decades ahead of you, Lauren. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> no wonder you're so much better than me in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Good, hands come down, tuck your back toes. Pyramid pose. Both legs are as straight as possible, dropping the head. One more deep breath. Good, step back to downward facing dog. We're gonna take our down, down dog scorpion again. So the right leg comes up, bend the knee, open the hip up, knee towards the ceiling. Good, close the hips and we'll switch. Stretch it straight up, bend the knee, turn. Good, bringing the foot back down and coming onto your knees. Okay, we'll close out with a camel pose, which we did during our back bending class as well. So I'll just review the safety for camel pose. Uh, it's a deep hip flexor and back bend stretch. Um, if you're new to the camel pose, you're going to want to tuck your toes so that when you lean back, you can grab the heels a little bit higher. But we're first going to start out um, with the hands on the low back, your sacrum, as if you were putting your hands in your pocket. Okay, so right where your pants start is where you want your fingers. And we're just going to do a back bend here. Pinch your elbows together, push your hips forward and then look up. And we're gonna keep the hands there just to warm up our back a little bit. Keep pushing your hips forward. Squeeze your inner thighs. Relax your neck. Relax your head. And then coming up, you can take a little child's pose if you need it. We're gonna do that one more time. Good, coming up, making sure that your knees are hip width apart. And then you can choose to uh, tuck your toes here again. We'll start the same way. Push your hips forward and look up. If you can see the back wall behind you, keep pushing your hips forward. One hand can reach for the heel. If you can reach comfortably, then both hands. Oh, if I can see the wall, right? If you can see the wall, yep. If you can't see the wall, you're not ready to touch your heels. <laughs> Keep pushing. It's okay, Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> and then one hand at a time, come back to your low back. Bring your knees together to touch and take a child's pose.
One more deep breath here. Good, hands come forward, downward facing dog. And then flow forward into plank and sink your hips, but keep a nice distance between your ears and your shoulders. Do not shrug your shoulders here. We're just stretching out the hip. Your low back, if it feels like it's crunching, um, stop. Because if you're going like this, your low back is gonna, it's gonna hurt. One more time. Good, back to downward facing dog. One deep breath, then right back down to your back bend. Do this a few times at your own pace. Just sinking the hip. One more deep breath. Good, come back to child's pose. Three deep breaths here. coming up and we'll end with one final pose and it's going to be a pose that we hold for actually a few minutes and it's probably one of the best things you can do for your hips in general. Um, it's something that I learned while working in a sports rehabilitation clinic. They used to do this a lot um, and I actually when I went there they told me to do this because my hips were uneven so this this exercise helped me a lot. Um, if you have a couch or a bed at home where you can just rest your legs so that they're in a 90 degree position and lay with your palms face up, placing your calves and your heels fully supported on either a chair, a couch, or a bed, um, and just allow your hips to reset, the gravity will do the work for you. Because Yanni and I don't have that, we're gonna put our feet up against the wall. Unless um, I go in the waiting room. Unless you go <laughs> in the waiting room, yeah. <laughs> and just move our camera out there. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's definitely more ideal, obviously, if you have your full calf supported right up to the knee, if possible. Um, if not, you can also do what we're doing and just use the wall for today. And then you want to find a comfortable place for your head to lie so that it's nice and centered. Your neck is fully extended, nice and long, ears away from the shoulders. My palms are face up. And I'm allowing both of my hip bones to just sink into the floor. And again, this is a totally different experience if you have a couch or a chair to, less, to just rest your legs on. Um, and even this is better than nothing. Yeah, so if you have a leg underneath, something under your calf, then your hips get more elongated, I guess? Or? Yes, it's almost like a traction thing. Hmm. Yeah, it's like if you have anything that can serve as a shelf for your, from your knee down. Highly recommend it. Um, something you can do too is if you have a yoga ball at home, you can rest your legs on the yoga ball as if it were a chair. That's something I actually, I have one in my room and I do that every week and it really helps. This is a good thing to do too, like right before bed. And we're taking deep breaths into the chest. And a good way to test if you, in particular, are having really tight hip flexors is um, when you when you're standing, if you have a hard time bringing your knee all the way to your chest, or even when you're lying down, bringing your knee all the way to your chest, that's usually an indicator that you have really tight hip flexors.
you should feel your low back and your hip bones sinking into the floor. And this really allows your hip girdle to um, just realign itself because when we're driving or standing or walking, we tend to not be perfectly symmetrical. So you'll tend to be, you know, shifting your weight to one side when you stand or when you drive, you're leaning slightly toward one side. And over time that creates imbalances in your hip muscles where maybe one hip is a little bit higher than the other or one hip flexor is a little bit tighter than the other. So this sort of just helps with your hip symmetry, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, one more deep breath here. And then we'll hug the knees in, rock from side to side. Roll up to a seated position. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Next week we're doing neck. Uh, so we're gonna be doing <laughs> all neck stretches. And because a lot of neck tightness comes from your trap and shoulder muscles as well, we will be dipping into that as well. Um, we're gonna be using a tennis or lacrosse ball for that class. So um, if you wanna do a little preparation and, and grab a tennis ball before, if you don't have those at home, a golf ball can also work. It's just not as, as effective, but you can certainly do that as well. So I hope to see you there. Awesome. Let, let us know, you know if there's anything you want us to work on. Yeah, so bring a, a tennis ball or a cross ball if you have it. So we'll mm -hmm. bring that, which is good. I think I saw that we had an extra viewer in, uh, just random jiu-jitsu guy on yeah. the last week's uh, for the shoulders and shoulders and neck. Yeah, definitely something that we need for jiu-jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> I see uh, Joe Campisi's back on with the applause. Hi, Joe. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. So also, guys, if you uh, didn't get a chance to listen to uh, to the Death Podcast this week that I was on, it was a really good one. It's very really inter funny. <laughs> very entertaining and funny, especially if you guys, everyone here you know, knows everyone in that, uh, <laughs> uh, on that conversation, but it's entertaining and, uh, we're going to, um, they're going to be doing a few other ones actually, you know, um, interviewing other people, their training partners of mine and mentors of mine and stuff. So it should be cool if hopefully they get on there and, uh, we got more and more stuff coming up next week. Um, let us know if you have anything specific for the jujitsu on the mat. I think we're going to have Greg teaching some takedowns next Wednesday, which would be fun, you know? specifically for jiu-jitsu and that like there's going to be differences between how you wrestle in a jiu-jitsu situation versus wrestling where you have to worry about guillotines and stuff so that should be good too and i'm definitely on monday going to be working on some open guard stuff i'm going to figure out which, what we haven't covered yet and get some details this week Yay. we did a lot of good stuff on on the streams i'm excited all right so you have a good weekend guys thanks guys Yay.